Okay, let's kick it off, guys. Um, so thanks for showing up, everybody, today to the NAR. Uh, this is the SF Bay Area Mastermind. Uh, we got some awesome information for you guys. Um, a ton of uh, uh, information, experience, and leadership here on the panel today. And so I'm really excited to kick this off. The last time we did something like this was back when COVID first hit, right? Right after COVID hit, we set one of these up. And um, for me, it was a really great way to, you know, connect with some of you guys, hear from what you guys were doing. And also, I think just provide some clarity and provide some assurance to, um, you know, the followers and agents that we're in touch with. Um, so I'm excited to do this again. So what we're going to do is just go around the room and give us like the 10 to 20 second um, intro on you guys. Who are you? Where are you from? What are you all about? Maybe anything that stands out you want people to know. And um, let's kick it off. Let's just go around the room. So I'm gonna start. Let's start with uh, Leslie Foster. You want to kick it off? Hey, everybody. I am Leslie Foster out of uh, Castro Valley, California, here in the East Bay. Um, my husband John and I have a team of about 60 amazing agents. Um, we're a mega icon team. We're in the top 30 right now with any XP Realty. So super excited to be here. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, let's go, Brett. Brett. All right. Off. Yeah. Uh, Brett Jennings here with uh, Real Estate Experts. We're an independent uh, on the side platform. Uh, we have uh, a team rich model. So I have my own personal team, Brett Jennings Group, which is about eight agents and does about 130 million. And then we have another uh, 75 agents that uh, run kind of on a team like brokerage here. Um, and we are in San Jose, California, Silicon Valley. Awesome. Awesome. Welcome, Brett. Hilda. Wow. Uh, good morning, everyone. And so excited to be here participating. I am just going to put it out there. I am uh, born and raised in a real estate family, been at this since 1987 and real estate is my life. So um, uh, very excited to uh, share some insight and just uh, discuss how we're going to innovate and get through this next little shift. Let's go. I like Gary. little shift. Little shit. Here we go. Keller Williams, Silicon City in uh, the North Valley and Evergreen, uh, but we work throughout the state of California. So we are 100% vested in making this work for everyone. Excellent. Gary, take it away. Hey, everybody. Gary Palacios with the Palacios Group at Compass. I've been in the industry for over 20 years. Um, I started out in San Jose, basically, and now I am no, a part of Silicon Valley. Opened up the Compass office here in Morgan Hill. I've uh, been the South County guy for the last 30 years or so, but uh, having a great time, enjoying this new process. I think it's going to be a great change for all of us, to be honest with you. Okay. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Welcome, Gary. Christine. Hi, everyone. I'm Christine Holt, and my brokerage is Security Pacific Real Estate. We are based in Richmond, and I cover West County, Alameda, Solano County. Um, I'm probably a newbie here, a newbie. I started right in the beginning of the pandemic, so excited to hear what everyone has to say about all the settlement stuff going on. Well, that's awesome. You get to experience a couple shifts, right, since you started. <laughs> uh, good stuff. Good stuff. Welcome, Christine. Uh, Wilson. What's up, everybody? It's Wilson Leung from Keller in Burlingame, uh, number one in NorCal, Hawaii last year. I'm hoping to do it again this year. And I remember this call with uh, some familiar faces back in 2020 for COVID. And that was at, at a time where we had a, a lot of confusion in the industry as well. And I know I'm sure everyone has been following, whether it's news or uh, industry professionals on this topic. Happy to share what we can share to help everyone that's watching us today. I'm a student here too, so I'm taking notes as you guys speak. There we go. There we go. Welcome, Wilson. Kenny, tell us about you, brother. Uh, Kenny Trung here with uh, Fast Real Estate by ESP. We're number two sales team last two years. Oh, actually, right now too with uh, with ESP with about 200 agents across the Bay Area. Uh, what around 220 agents, I think, on a good day. <laughs> there you go. Welcome, Kenny. <laughs> Um, and myself, for some of you guys that don't know, Enrique Medellin out of San Jose, my partner Jason Palomino and I have been in the business about 20 years now. We run PRG Real Estate. We do some mortgage stuff as well. We have a team of about 30 agents right now. So we're excited to be here with you guys. Um, so let's kick it off, guys. So initially, I guess my first question to you know whoever would like to answer, 
initial thoughts, initial reactions with this whole NAR thing, right? Like what are the initial thoughts that you guys are experiencing and maybe some of your team members or people in your organization are experiencing? I'll lead if that's okay or something. I just want to- Ladies first, let's go. <laughs> well, this shouldn't come as any surprise, I believe, to anyone. Um, this has been ongoing now for several years and long before the class action lawsuit, the Department of Justice and NAR were um, in uh, discussion and had also um, come close uh, to having a proposed settlement on the table. Um, and then the DOJ, um, did not follow through. I think that was my first concern when the DOJ pulled out of that settlement negotiation um, because I said, that's interesting that they would suddenly take that different shift. And lo and behold, very shortly thereafter, the class action litigation started. And that's when I knew we were going to be faced with even more significant impact than perhaps the original agreement between uh, NAR and the DOJ. And uh, the, that absolutely came to fruition. Uh, but this has been going on for quite some time. I think everybody who's a leader in the space has been following um, all of the cases closely. Um, and uh, we got our big... Uh, well, we and, and again, we've had people who settled or companies that settled prior to going to court. Um, then Keller Williams uh, settled in February. So uh, we definitely knew where this was leading. And then the big announcement on March 15th. Um, but I think everybody has uh, been preparing for this moment for uh, much longer than anticipated or, or much yeah. longer than the record shows right now. Absolutely. Yeah. It's an interesting full circle moment for me because I've been in the business 15 years. Got my license like the week before Bear Stearns collapsed in 2008. And what's what's ironic is, um, you know, when this settlement happened, the, the jury case, there was a piece of testimony from this guy, Alan Dalton, who uh, used to be with RAS Media. You think he's been head of Coldwell Banker at one point. But uh, my first day, first week in real estate, he stood on a stage in San Jose, California. He stood in front of the room and he said one thing, and it changed my, it changed the trajectory of my starting career at the time. He said, he stood in front of the room and like, this is some training. He says, the problem with the real estate industry is that the consumer's general perception of a real estate transaction is that it's a fee inflated event to perpetuate an inefficient industry. And then I was like, damn, that doesn't sound good. And the second thing he said, and I remember this verbatim because it like, it hit me like a ton of bricks. He's like, uh, then when consumers were surveyed about salespeople, real estate people are one step above used car salespeople. And I was like, crap, I just like sold a business in another industry to get into real estate. But um, for me personally, like I made a decision at that time, like I want to find a way like we can deliver real estate services in such a way that the value we bring far exceeds the commission we're ever paid. So it's not questioned. And I think really the, the prevailing conversation we're all having right now, like in the industry is like, how can we add more value? So, you know, uh, for some people are freaking out. Other people are like, oh my God, like, but you know, I, I really think this could be um, a defining moment, right? For, for those in the industry who are really here to be true professionals, not Instagram stars or TikTok stars, but really committed to helping people, right? And it's like, we can show up and, and be like that. Um, we have an opportunity to kind of like, reclaim the industry in the consumer's mind and those that are willing to charge and lead it like watch out man because here we come i agree 100 100 I, I totally agree brad, brad that that's just right on it's about leadership and this is why do you ever notice that in any, any type of situation of catastrophe or momentous change what do they say show me your leader show me your leader this is where the cream of the crop is going to rise up. And it's like, it's about leadership. It's about the skill set that you have as agents. I mean, come on. We have to study to show thyself approved in a sense, to understand where this market is going. And it's so true. We're, we're seeing that people are, A, either they're scared, then that means they're not really into this type of a business. I mean, I was here for the 2007 8 crash. I mean, I literally went full time during that particular time. And I was so busy because I saw a, a situation, I pivoted and I changed quickly and we were able to be a better agent during that time. I mean, the skill set rose up. Half the agents all say, I want to be a foreclosure agent. 
No, you want to be a short sale agent to get those buyers back into homes in the future. And it took mm -hmm. off. But again, you have to see it visually and you have to be a leader in this industry. If you're not working on your leadership skills, then I'm sorry, it's not going to be something that you're going to be able to last in this business. I think it has to do a lot with making a decision to be a business person um, and to understand uh, systems and models. When we look at the group that's, you know, participating on this um, uh, in this mastermind, uh, your success has been dictated by your ability to actually structure your careers as a business model to execute and have systems and models. And we've done a absolutely proficient side um, on the uh, listing and sales uh, representing sellers. And unfortunately, uh, many have not uh, executed on the same level representing buyers. And part of that is because a lot of coaches and a lot of people condition people to say, do an outstanding job, produce great results, but don't brag about it and don't let people know what you do. And that I think is where the industry has failed. If buyers knew every step that an agent mm -hmm. does on their behalf, reviewing inspections, negotiating on multiple levels, um, constantly looking out in their best interest um, to protect the asset, the most expensive asset that they often acquire in their lifetime, um, either uh, pre and post acquisition, um, it would be we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. And we need to do a much better job, uh, not just articulating our value, because that's also up to different uh, uh, interpretation, but it's actually letting consumers know what is being done on their behalf. And that's where I believe uh, the new direction of the market will go. And it's going to be an absolute improvement, in my opinion. I think that's a great point, Hilda. Like what you're explaining is like the consumer's general perception to go back to those words, like of a, of, for a sell, uninformed seller is they think we put a sign in the yard, hold an open house and collect a check. When all right. of us know, like anybody who's done listings, it's like there's a hundred and something things that we have to do. And it's not until you sit down with a seller and make, where I call make that value visible or articulate and expressly explain all of that that goes into it. Uh, that they start to get it and understand it because those paychecks have been free on the buyer side, for lack of a better word, meaning we didn't have to do any of that. We, we've just gotten really lazy. And now uh, is the opportunity for us to just um, at least, I guess, talk our walk. We've been walking the walk, many of us, but maybe not talking it. <laughs> yeah. Thank yeah, I, I think to add to that, guys, is um, on, on the buyer side, a lot of what we do has been downplayed because it, you never had to go out there and really fight for your commission, right? And so when, when you go meet with the seller, you're busting out all these things you're going to do to market their home and uh, all these different things, right? So you're because you have to sell the commission. But on the buyer side, I feel like agents haven't really had to step it up in that arena. And so the commission was already set, right? So now it's going to it's going to require them to really figure out what is my value proposition to a buyer? How do I package that in a presentation? How do I articulate articulate that to the client um, so that they can pay me what I'm worth? So absolutely agree. Um, Christine, what, what's your initial thoughts, initial reaction from your perspective? Yeah. So again, I joined like right before the pandemic. So I'm used to having to be agile, right? I left my like corporate job and stepped into real estate and then the world shut down. So I'm used to this and I'm a newbie, but I would say focus. Okay. I think people get scared because they don't educate themselves on what's exactly happening. So you have to kind of just walk out the noise and figure out what's going on. And as soon as you start to educate yourself, like what is the new law? What is within my control? You can calm mm. down and then focus on what mm. you control, which is yourself and real estate. And I think for me, um, a huge part, like I would think of my success in the beginning of the pandemic and what I'm gonna have to amp up and do again is focus on for me is like my online presence right how are people going to find me online because now that buyers are knowledgeable or going to be get the knowledge that they now may have to pay commission they're going to do their research on realtors now like in the pandemic gone are the days of like getting so much business that's not going to be like that anymore i really don't think i think buyers are going to be savvy they're going to know that they need to research their agents they're going to go online they're going to look at the top realtors, the ones who are connected in the communities they're buying in. 
So for me, it's like, what am I going to focus on to be that agent? I am going to network. I'm going to go to brokers tours. I'm going to amp up my reviews and make sure that my presence, like if I Google realtor in Oakland or realtor in Richmond, am I ranking up there? And if not, what am I going to do to make sure that I'm findable online? I think that's mm. key. Um, and then being like well networked in the industry um, because this is going to be a value to buyers. Are you going to be able to get their buy their offers accepted? Who do you know? Right. So I really think just like for me, it's focusing on where I'm at online and having that reputation. So um, business as usual for me, I guess. I'm just not trying to stress out about it and get in my head. Um, so again, it's just, you know, sharpening your sword. I, I, I think really quick is that if I can look on this panel here, how many are listers and how many are buyer's agents? The reality is most of us are probably listing agents. So the, it's like we have to change and become a new buyer's agent. What does that mean? How are we going to skill set ourselves to become those buyer's agents? I mean, I mean, the reality of me, I don't have a lot of buyers. I mean, I work with listings. So how am I going to stabilize myself in this industry as a listing agent, but also cooperate with my colleagues that I know that I, they know that if you're going to get a, a, an offer compensation from me, it better be darn good because I've been in the industry a long time and I'm a good negotiator. Now, hopefully that's going to be the case. Now I have to work on the buyer side. How are we going to do that? What are we going to get our buyer's agents to become? Are they going to go back to school? Are they going to learn negotiations? Are they going to learn how to put a package together to win that deal? I mean, this is a whole new set of skills that are going to have to be learned. Um, you know, we started this a couple of years ago, getting buyer broker agreements, understanding how to do that. Um, right now, that's the key. We're going to have to get those signed. Who's going to come to you? Are you the better agent during that buyer's agent? Yeah, so I heard um, a stat running on a different call. I, I, it was, I forgot where he sourced it from. Maybe it was like Tom Ferry or WordPens or something, but it said like at least 80% of buyer's agents don't even have a buyer's presentation. I know for our team, that's one of the strongest <laughs> things that we have that. and do where after you meet a client, you know, you meet a client open house, the whole goal is to schedule them for an appointment so you can deep dive for half an hour to an hour about the process. So they're rather prepared and educated to make the best uh, informed decision. But most agents just don't have that. So it's really going to cause people to level up. And then it, that's the, like Christine said, if you can even get them to find you online, vet you for reviews, the same way you shop for a, like a dentist or a doctor attorney it sounds crazy, but that's the reality of it. But just think about how much time you spend, including myself on a $20 item on Amazon, or I'm just looking for a TV just for fun. I was watching TV reviews just for fun last night. I have a decent TV. I'm not upgrading, but I spent 20 minutes watching TV because it's interesting about TVs. It's interesting to me, but that's the way I shop for a commodity item with thousands of dollars or 10, 20 dollars. Think of how, how hard it'll shop for an agent. And then you, you, most of you guys can't be found. That's going to be challenging between the reviews, your online persona, your LinkedIn, your history of sales. I think new agents are going to have a very, very hard time in this market because what's your value? You're, as a person, I'm pretty sure you're an amazing human being value, but as a salesperson, a real estate salesperson, you haven't done anything. So you technically don't have any experience or value to charge whatever fee that is you think you should have. So it's going to make, I think truly is going to make everyone step up. Um, spent four days, I think, uh, uh, less in Nashville with a bunch of top producers and, you know, the, the optimism in the room is really high. The people who are excited about this business are going to do more business <laughs> and a lot of people are going to be out of business. So whether you're, ex you're optimistic about this market or you're, this is the end of the world for you, either way it's true. So you just got to figure out like where you want to spend your time and energy in the next couple of months. You do have many months to prepare uh, for this market to be whoever kind of agent you want to become. Uh, I wanted to add to that, Kenny. Uh, I think we were probably on the same call, and it was, uh, I think, organized by Tom Ferry and uh, uh, KCM. And yeah, it was actually, yeah, I think, was. Was both yeah very high end of 80%, 89% of uh, buyer's agents that were surveyed did not have a buyer's presentation uh, prepared. Uh, didn't have a buyer's guide that was offered. And so when those two um, really key pieces are missing in your arsenal, there's a good chance that that consult, uh, consultation also failed to exist. And that's 
you know, where the root of some of this, uh, these legal innuendos have led us to. So yes, professionalism will step up. Um, and I think it will be a value add for consumers and also for agents as well to really understand the nature of the business, um, to understand their food, uh, fiduciary responsibilities. Um, at least here in California, um, you're not uh, going to be uh, conducting yourself as a functionary and um, there people are going to get better and consumers are going to get a much better service and I believe that it will elevate um, the status of realtors overall. Um, so you know we know what NAR the direction that they've gone in um, and I don't know if any of you have read AB 2992 but uh, the California Association of Realtors uh, has already found a co-sponsor for the bill that's going to move it forward. And their goal is to take this to the legislature um, and hopefully get it passed there so that they can put it on the ballot. And um, their goal is to make it law that the use of the buyer broker agreement um, uh, is implemented in these transactions. So I don't think we're going backwards. If there's some naysayers out there, or people who say, well, you know, that it hasn't been signed yet. So it's only proposed and it is proposed proposed and the proposal we have, I think we should be gracious and know that we can work with it um, because it's much better than it um, not being passed and then we um, start over. And that is Carr's attempt to avoid having any copycat lawsuits in the state of California because they are popping up. And I appreciate that they've got a strong plan B and they're going to be moving forward. So I think what we really have to focus on is getting all our people trained up um, I've been working, you know, especially on the buyer brokers agreement side for uh, over a year, uh, really, really making incorporating it as part of our regular curriculum. And we have agents that are already signing them and just to make sure that they're um, compensated and that their compensation is um, satisfied. Uh, because who wants to be the person who leads a career on concessions? Do you want your compensation and your income for your family to be based on a concession that someone <laughs> is willing to make? So that, my friends, is the big key there. Concessions sound wonderful, um, just like uh, when you know a seller voluntarily came up and said, you know, I want to drive more of the spirit of competition to my listing, and I'm willing to compensate you. So think about that. Right now, we're in a strong seller's market. Um, and hopefully for the foreseeable future. So Gary, um, stick with your listings. <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to be coaching my people to, you know, be ultra focused in that space as well, uh, because that is really um, the area of the business that uh, has not been challenged. But it will change also be lots of different levels of negotiation on that, a lot more explanation to the clients. And at the end of the day, it's all about transparency. And we live in a society now because of our social reach and our influence that it's all about transparency. Absolutely. Yeah. I'd love to add something. You know, yeah. her, uh, the agreement's been in place for as long as I've been in real estate. I've been in real estate almost 20 years now, right? And we're not really doing anything different in regards to buyers, right? They know that I get compensated by the seller. It's just making sure that the buyers and agents who are new to the business know what their value is. So like Kenny and everyone else has said, make sure you have a buyer presentation. Sit down. What is your proposition that is going to allow you to stand above every other buyer that they research, right? Any other agent, right? Are you a good negotiator? Do you have good connections within your community? Are you able to um, sit down and educate them, right? There's so many things people like you guys have all said don't realize what a buyer's agent and or what a listing agent does, right? I have an agent on my team who's helping the seller paint their house today. I have been at many closings before the buyer shows up with a broom and a vacuum and cleaning toilets. Like there's so many things behind the scenes people don't realize that we do to make sure that it is a, a seamless um, process for them. So. I really do think this is going to weed out all the bad agents. It's going to allow the agents who are very dedicated and actually love this career and have been able to support their families to level up and make more money. And I think this is going to be a really good thing for our industry. I really do. Yeah, I'm yeah, excited. I, do. I, I would echo what Leslie says there. Just Wilson. Quick, like, oh. Yeah, Wilson's being silent. Come on, Wilson. <laughs> 
No, Never Brett Scott Wilson. Give, I'll, give I'll us go after Brett. <laughs> Go after yeah, go after Brett. yeah, I was just going to say, I'm going to echo what, what Leslie has to say. If we step back and look, you know, we, I think your your message, Christine, was like, let's keep calm and carry on. Um, we, we Those who are committed to the industry realize that actually this could be an opportunity. If you look at the statistics and the numbers, 70% of the listings are done by 30% of the agents. That means 70% of the business is done by people who are mostly focused on the buyer side, and that's our new and part-timers. And for the new and part-timers listening, there's still you, you actually have a better foot in the door um, than than those who've been in the industry a while because you don't know what you don't know. You you aren't and, and you're you're eager and open to learn. No but if you're, com- if you're committed to one ser- truly serving people, and it's kind of ironic that the last time this group got together on this call was like a pivot moment when we were went into COVID, and like we're like, oh my God, what do we do? And I think the consistent message we all said like, don't try to sell anybody anything. Like just be of service to your people connect with your people, connect with your clients, connect with your agents, care about them, and then like show up strong to, to serve them in whatever way you can. We did that and it like turned into 53 deals like within a month of, of, of COVID. And I think this is the same opportunity. We really, we, the, we've gone from a transactional environment where everything was moving so fast and we became very transactional. We're now interest rates have come up. We got people that are more concerned. It's super competitive. Like we really got to get in there with our buyers and our buyers to educate them. But um, this opportunity coming back to that, like, okay, so we know actually that the squeeze is going to come when, when when our commission is based on a concession. <laughs> and, and as Hilda, Hilda uh, pointed out, in a hot, hot seller's market, those sellers may not be as eager to offer a concession or as much of a concession. So we are going to see like commissions compress. How much? We don't know. Maybe the two and a half percent is going to come down to two. But for sure, whatever it is, it's probably going to get squeezed. And the buyer's agents are the ones who are are, are going to get squeezed. Um, so yeah, we might see 30% of the agents out of the business in six to 12 months. But if the total commissions went down 20% and we lost 30% of the agents, for those people who are committed to the industry, it's a net positive. And I think we are you know, moving in the right direction. So I think, yeah, letting go of the fear and being like, be able to lean into that learners, what is it, like growth mindset um, and really leveling up your game and finding like, you know, if you don't have a team leader or, or, or broker that's 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 on it, that's demonstrating leadership about, hey, this is where we're going and this is the solution that we have and this is how we're going to educate you and add value to your consumer, then you need to look for a new home. But, um, you know, that, that, I think that's the piece of leadership that we all have the opportunity to to bring forward. Absolutely. And as listing agents, right, this is the opportunity where we can really take the time to educate our sellers on why it is so important to offer a compensation to the other side. So. You know, I have been on, I think, nine listing appointments since the 15th, since this has come out, and I've not had one seller ask me about it. And I'm prepared. I'm ready to have the discussion with them. But not one of them has said, well, do I need to pay the other brokerage? It comes across, you know, I don't really talk about fees. They sometimes say, you know, what is the fee? And I say, this is what the fee is. It's the between these two parties. And everyone's like, that sounds great. Sounds fair, right? So as long as I'm adding value and I'm giving something that they understand, like this is just not here. I'm gonna put a sign in the yard, Mr. Seller. I'm gonna just show up and do the open house and then I'll see you at the table when it closes and collect your check. That's not how it works, right? So as long, I think, as people can just give the value that they're gonna offer on both sides. And as a listing agent, I think it's really important, right? I do have a very strong listing business to make sure my clients realize why it is important to offer compensation because we don't want to exclude any buyers. We want all the agents bringing those buyers to the house. It would be physically impossible for me to speak to a hundred buyers at an open house, go through a hundred inspection reports, go through a hundred disclosure reports. It's just, there's no way I could get them the top dollar. So as long as I can convey that to the seller and make sure they understand the value of having 50 other agents representing those buyers, getting those buyers to come to the table, I think we're going to be okay. I think it's, it's really like real estate is very fluid. It always has been. We were in the Mario days, John and I, and I thought, oh my God, we're going to have to get a real job. Turned out to be, we were one of the top brokers and we were selling a hundred homes, you know, between the two of us, you know, in the very beginning. And so with this, I feel like it's going to be the exact same. This is an opportunity for our industry to really, be put up a notch above the used card salesman, like Brent said, right? Like no one wants to be referred like that. So I'm excited. I mean, this, this is like 
great opportunity right now just to talk to your sellers. I mean, I, I did go on several different listing appointments, and that's the first thing I bring up. I said, what have you heard in the news? Let's talk about it. Honestly, even I was at the dentist this morning. The dental assistant and the dentist asked me, what's going on, Gary? How are you doing? I'm like, I talked to them about it. And those are my clients. That my dentist. Hey, Gary, are you okay? Gary, are you okay? I'm like, <laughs> are you okay are you doing well i'm like uh i think i got 14 different listings going on right now sure i'm okay <laughs> okay wilson are you okay it's wilson's turn. Wilson. Yeah, <laughs> wilson's you guys. No, I'm, I'm listening observing so i appreciate the thoughts um you know i was gonna go off of what brett was saying how it reminds me and i heard it from someone else in the new york leasing and residential apartment space when things are really hot, landlords choose not to compensate brokers. But when things aren't hot, they are offering compensation. That's what we call free market. I think, um, as we all know, the Justice Department hasn't weighed in yet, and it's still an active lawsuit as much as a settlement has been reached. So for all we know, it's still subject to change. But last I look at, looked at stats is buyers will still buy, sellers will still sell. And 90% of all transactions are all still facilitated by agents. And then when I think about on the listing side and related to the buy side, how silly would it be for me to work on a listing, perform work in time, commit my resources of my team and not have a listing agreement signed? And that's how we've done the buy side for the longest time. So in some ways, if you have a strong relationship and you've built trust, doesn't this benefit us? Because we're earning the business up front, signing a contract. Maybe it does have to be pre-negotiated now. With the with what we're comp being compensated with, but isn't that a good thing for us because we're ensuring our compensation? And then last, I'm going to say is, you know, this is what I heard from Gary this morning. Gary Keller, he said, "Would you question a pilot because you saw something on the news when you jumped on a plane? Probably not. You trust a professional." Only United, to us. <laughs> yeah, only United or maybe Southwest, but uh, but yeah, the the thing is, you trust a professional to do their job. There's a lot of noise in our industry right now because of headlines. And we have to combat the noise. If you're a professional, you're not going to be phased by this, right? So you just have to make sure that your presentation is spot on. You know your value and you can present it. And it's as simple as, you know, that one, two, three. Wilson. Uh, learn, um, yes, sir. I think it was two days ago uh, at a mastermind. I was like, you know, now's a great time to call all your, all your buyers. Like, hey, have you heard the great news? It's how you spend it in the <laughs> messaging, right? If everyone, if the sky's falling, you're, you're one of those agents posting crazy stuff on TikTok or Facebook group. They, I'm not even sure, like, are people aware that the stuff you post Facebook group could be seen by your clients and you're like yelling at other people online regardless of it, but this is how you position yourself. If you're excited about it. You have an opportunity to call them. And then that's like Wilson was saying, like, now we're not wasting as much time, not wasting, like spending that much time and resources. You know, you're not going to get buyers calling 10 different agents to, because their agents out of town just because they want a showing. We have those. You're not going to get a car with random people that just wants to see you once and then work with, right to off, offer with their cousin. It's going to save us a lot more time. The process will be more streamlined. Like if, even if you're hiring an attorney right now, you can totally talk to the other attorney, but they'll just charge you there too. So like, it, it's just going to make the process easier uh, for agents who do business. And I think it's going to have us really understand how to build a business more than, you know, dancing online and hoping someone calls you because you seem really cool or fun. And then like, Hey, like show me this house. And then it, it's, it's work, but I, you know, I've been really pressing on my team to over, over the last year now to really step it up. I've been, I'm, I'm going to dress up after this to the office, but like I just show up in the office in t-shirts and gym shorts and, you know, like just a mess on the field that you want to earn very high income, but you look like you just stepped out of, stepped out of a game or the gym. It's just, it's just, it's just going to make, I think, elevate everyone in the profession. So question for all you guys is how are we being that, you know, nothing is official until July, right? What are we doing right now? Like, are we getting ahead of this thing right now? Are we starting to make changes now? Are we calling our clients now? What's the message we're saying to our team and our organizations? What are you guys' thoughts on that? Well, I'm a big fan of uh, Jeff Glover. How many of you uh, follow Jeff Glover? Guy's a beast. Um, and he's got a mofer for everything. Um, I, I Has anybody here seen Jeff? Any of his presentations? Oh my God, the guy's just incredible. Brett, you probably know Jeff Glover. Uh, he's a... Uh, a KW guy, but he, uh, and he does coaching for everybody, but right now he's just so spot on. Um, 
he says the greatest mo for to anybody who's worried about if they can't afford on the buy side to pay the buyer's commission should transact now before uh, July. So you want to talk about mofers. There you go. That's great, great motivation. If you've got a pipeline of buyers and they're anxious or concerned as to whether or not they're going to have to pay their buyer's agent, then it's fine. Get it done right now. Um, and we know that it's better because if interest rates drop, there's going to be an other, you know, a lot more people coming out of the woodwork and we don't have enough inventory to go around as it is. So um, there's one tip. Um, I also believe that, um, you know, skilling yourself up, making sure that you understand what you do, just, you know, redoing your buyer's consultations, um, you know, being as detailed as oriented, uh, making sure that you're having strong buyer's consultations, not only to express what your value proposition is, to, but to identify who the truly motivated parties are and who's ready to write um, so that you're not spending, you know, countless hours out showing properties or having to show, you know, 10 to 15 properties before your offer gets accepted. You know, I, I believe doing a better job from the get-go um, and improving your communications and understanding and compensation is the right thing to do. It's been done forever on the sales side. So let's just step up, be professional about it. And then my little tip will be, because realtors need to read, is get yourself into a speed reading class so that you can read 900 pages in a day. Um, that's going to, you know, that's really important. If you start reading those inspections the way you're supposed to, and you start, start reading the CCNRs the way you're supposed to, all the other HOA docs, um, you're going to be going through piles of paperwork. Um, and it's your responsibility. You don't have to know everything, but you need to know where there's red flags and you need to be able to point them out to your clients um, to avoid repercussions. Because I believe that the buyer's agent will be held as highly accountable as the listing agent uh, from here on out. I believe in Bill. Oh, go ahead, Brett. You go, Brett. Oh, you're muted, Brett. I'm, I'd echo everything that Hilda said, and we've kind of broken it down to, to five main areas to focus on. The first is you have to bring true value. And so that's elevating your skills. If you've been on the buyer side, one of the great courses that's out there is the certified negotiation expert. We've required that of all of our agents as they come into our world, uh, only because when consumers are surveyed, on both the listing and the buyer side, sellers want somebody who's great at marketing and negotiation. Buyers want somebody who understands the market and is a great negotiator. So level up your skills there. Number two, you have to believe in your value. You know, if you're going to ask someone for two and a half percent, I think that's what created a lot of anxiety for people moving into this is like they don't know if they believe the value. Uh, and so part of that is documenting your value. So go back and look at like, what is your, one of my agents, Ann McKinney, she keeps a log, a spreadsheet of every failed offer um, that didn't get accepted. And, and so she knows exactly what her ratio is of how many offers it takes to get one accepted. So if you sit down with a buyer and you know that it, on average, it takes an agent in the market, seven offers to get accepted and you get your offer accepted on average on the second or third attempt, like there's real value in that. So being able to know your numbers and know how you stack up against the market um being able to document that and then that last piece is articulating it that's what the buyer presentation um, is you put those numbers together work with your broker your team make sure they have already a, a, a presentation or a set value and then lastly obviously getting an agreement in writing about your value up front um, and so that is the buyer broker agreement um, so you've got your standard buyer presentation that you usually have them sign a buyer broker agreement and now there's going to be a third form that you'll submit with your offer I think it's a buyer broker bbca or something a compensation agreement that you'll submit uh, with your offer so get trained up on those things get ready because july 15th is not that far away so that's uh that's that's what we're doing and that's what we're advising people to do i think one I thing to add guys uh, if i can is um just to echo what what brett was saying is i heard this this morning on a, on a podcast that good agents will understand how this is all working, but great agents will be able to understand it and explain it very well, right? So there's a difference between just understanding what's happening and being able to articulate that when you meet with you know clients and, and your team. Um, so I think it goes back to even basics, right? Like as these things change, if you've never had to present a buyer broker agreement, or if you haven't had a lot of experience on the listing side selling commission, 
this is your time to start practicing right now. Like you need to start role playing that stuff. You need to start practicing it. You need to record yourself and don't practice on your client. And then mess, it up, mess it up. And then, you know, they go meet with some other agent. And now that client's gone. Right. So it's even just back to basics. Some of us that have been in the industry for a while, um, we forget about the value of just practicing our, our communication skills. Right. It's very, very basic. But role play goes a long way, right? And especially if you haven't had to do this in a while, it, it's new territory for you, right? So all my experienced agents out there, I, I challenge you to go back and set up some role play. And of course, brand new agents need to be doing that all day long. I think for our, list, for our listings, we spend so much time and money and energy trying, it's really hard to get listings. I always make fun of agents when they're spending this much time farming and they go compete in the Super Bowl, but they never even played a, a, a game. So on the buyer side, we, we've lucked out because a lot of buyers make us practice all the time. By not working with us so now it, now to actually like have to play seriously every time is going to make it step it up i think well you know and everything that's professional the game is never won uh you know on game day it's always won in practice and that's mm -hmm. one thing you know our industry needs to scale up okay. and keep keep in mind that at least for us in California, the California Association of Realtors, the Forms Committee, um, will be releasing new forms shortly, um, no later than June. Um, and so they've already, you know, they're already planning to mark up the documents, um, both on the list side and on, uh, you know, the buyer uh, agency agreements. So uh, right now we're training with the basic models that we have, but they will be edited um, to tighten things up even better and to adapt to um, the new proposals um, that are in the settlement just to, you know, add again, more value to our realtor members. And I got to give CAR a lot of kudos for everything that they're doing. They've been very proactive um, to keep us from, you know, having to take on any other litigation that would result in, you know, further damage to consumers in the long run, because again, all of these costs are going to be costs of doing business and uh, also to, um, you know, just have people level up and do a much better job um, uh, for consumer protection, which I think is fantastic. So part, part of what I do for our team is um, you, I teach on leadership. That's one of my giftings of that. And it's actually part of my degree is building right. strong leaders. Uh, the key is that if you can show me a 10 number leader, I'm going to show you a very successful person. Uh, so whatever your letter, your leadership skill is, that's going to be the better agent, supposedly, right? And, and it does work if we do that. So that's number one. We go through like the 21, 21 irrefutable laws of leadership. We make sure that we're going to be strong leaders in our industry. Uh, currently, what I'm doing right now is I'm working on the book, Be the Unicorn. Be, these are data-driven uh, data driven uh, habits that actually separate you as a leader in the industry. And this is for even real estate. It's about being fast, being being agile, just being particular things that you can learn. And then part of the other things that we do in our team, we're actually going to a class, Brett. We're going to the, uh, we're actually going to Harvard. We're a Harvard online uh, mastery of negotiation class. We're there. We're almost done. So we Fantastic. will have the mastery of negotiation from Harvard, and that's going to be part of who we are because I'm making sure that we were prepared for what's about to happen. And again, I want my agents on my team to make sure that when they show up at that listing appointment or that buyer's agreement, that they're ready to actually say, I'm a Harvard graduate in the sense of a mastery class. Why not? Absolutely. Elevating those skills is, is, is the, you know, the, the first step for sure. Amazing. Love it. Well, the one thing that mastery does is it saves you time in the long run because you invest to become a professional and then you're confident and you can do the job and you can do it with um, great speed. So that's the effectiveness of working with a solid mindset, focusing on mastery, you get your time back in the long run and then you can do more volume. Um, and yeah, mastery is a big word over here. <laughs> I have some quick thoughts. Um, if you guys know whether the market's good or bad, what's a question we always get from consumers? How's the market? How's the market? How's what, the market? what do you think is the new question we're going to get? Are you How's still in the business? business? Yeah. <laughs> Are you okay? 
I heard I don't have to pay the buyer's agent. We're already hearing that. That's already become a topic of conversation before the proposed um, settlement had already taken place. So consumers are smart, just like they're out there looking at agent profiles. They also, man, they know their search skills are so strong. They can go, you know, in onto uh, the MLS and search by square footage, by um, Northwest, Southeast. I mean, they, ha they are just incredible. They'll use that Google earth and they can tell you more about the direction of the home and how it's facing than the agents can. So um, consumers are now equipped to act access so much data online and so much information um, that we have to be absolutely 100% uh, transparent and fluid in our communications with them and explain to them the pros and cons of, you know, every action they take and make sure that they are um, creating the best set of circumstances to get the outcome that they want um, and still creating a win-win environment for the buyer, uh, because the goal is to get to the finish line and to convey title um, to the buyer. Uh, it isn't to spend an endless amount of time going back and forth with counter offers and, um, you know, just to have the deal blow up because someone didn't do their job uh, properly. So um, I think it's uh, going to be very welcomed that the buyer's agents level up and are performing at a skill set uh, similar to listing agents um, simply through you know their training and um, and what will be required moving forward Strong anybody idea else heard. what are you guys doing now yeah go for it, that, a new idea i heard over over the weekend was like I, I, no one has it yet but as a concept of like uh surveying your clients for the level of competency because maybe a savvy buyer that has has a lot of experience buying multiple properties doesn't need you that much for all the steps of the process. But someone that needs your due diligence, you know, had never even looked at a report, be uh, inspection report before, doesn't know what uh, a deposit is, then you can kind of grade them on that and question them. And then you can uh, together figure out what's a, a good compensation for your services. So I think we're going to definitely be moving into compensation versus skill set. It's not just what they research you for, but so that that many agents might make that their business models and the tricky part about this new market is also the competition will not be displayed on it displayed on mls you don't know what, what anyone else would be doing unless you talk to them and, and they openly talk about them like on this type of format so i think there will be a lot of behind the scenes fully legal fully ethical ways of doing business we just don't know what those are and then, but and then there's gonna be new companies that will come and capitalize this you know you already have certain companies like uh whether they're, you think they're great or not uh is irrelevant like you know fly homes or open door will just buy your home or redfin they've been around forever they haven't able to grow their business but in this type of format environment they might have more momentum and more more copycat models to offer something that fit more better fits what the buyer demand and what they're willing to offer is uh, but i i think that's true but however it's going to come back to relationships again I mean, if I'm in a dentist chair, they're asking me what my thoughts are. It backs to relationship. And I think we've already seen that come through. Uh, we've we've hear, heard about all these years, and it still comes back to the relationship of that particular agent in front of you, I think. So, I, I agree with Gary that we're, we're moving. We, we have been since the, the, the rates went up, like move from a transactional market to a relational market, and that really connecting with people, caring and showing up, but I, I think one of the mindset principles, right? We, we all need to be flexible <laughs> in this new world, adaptable, yeah. nimble, um, you know, and, and embrace the uncertainty and the change because in that space of uncertainty is where new models, new possibilities, things emerge. Like we just got to know like the, that book, Who Moved My Cheese? Like the cheese is like gone <laughs> right now. And we just need to be, um, yeah, flexible and, and uh, nimble and creative and really listening to what the consumers uh, wants are because some some uh, to Kenny's point some new models are lots of new models are probably going to emerge and you're going to need to find what works for you and what works for your clients uh, but I think like Gary yeah being in relationship and listening closely to what they're saying uh, and, and, and determining what, what's best for you and them will, will people are going to win and one, one thing I have not I, heard anyone say on any event I've been to is well, I've asked, no one had a question, no one had an answer for me. We're, we could be flexible, the agents, our team leaders could be flexible, but what about our brokerages? I know many of the big box brokerages out there, they they have, it might, it might not be in writing, but I know for a fact that they have some minimum standards that they have their agents meet. They won't, many times they will not allow them to take a listing uh, below a certain threshold. 
So I don't know what that would look like for a buyer's side. Because if you're with a luxury company, a very classy boutique, and you're trying to win a big uh, win a big client because it's, it's tied to the person, not the listing. You already have minimum standards in place. And what would that look like? And so I, I'm not sure. I haven't heard any company I, really talk about that I, yet. I don't know if it's true or not, but I had heard that uh, Compass had, had uh, this is one thing I'd heard. Gary, maybe you would speak to this, that if someone decides to take lower than the two and a half, Compass still will take their split on the two and a half. Um, I don't know if that's true or not. We're, we haven't had anything to talk about that yet regarding that, but I mean, a lot of our, our social media platforms and particular items are coming out right now. And you're going to see that because Compass has already given us all the information how to deal with this. But regarding after July, I, we don't still don't know. So we're not sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Compass was the first company to settle out that was outside of the lawsuit. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I think 84 corporations got a packet federal express uh sometime this week uh with instructions on how they could settle if uh, you were one of the companies that uh, didn't fall under the uh settlement arrangement uh that nar had uh reached so it's going to be interesting who hits the headlines next um, but there is some advantage to that i mean the the fact that keller williams settled um, we do have insight. Gary Keller sat in the hot seat and was, you know, one of the persons uh, that participated in that litigation. So um, we have a very good understanding of what direction this is headed and what the parties really want. Um, and they are seeking full transparency. So um, if you get a copy of that 180 page uh, lawsuit, and I would presume that everybody here has a copy of that, um, it's it's not going to be probably too far off of that unless, of course, the Department of Justice, who's representing um, the um, true um, or the probably the it's going to play the biggest role in that class action, um, you know, settlement portion or, or that's really the voice that they represent. Uh, hopefully they are. Um, good with the proposed settlement. And I understand a lot of effort went into um, you know, coming up with that uh, proposal. So let's hope for the best and just level up, work hard and provide value um, to the consumers that we already know is there, but we need to do a much more effective job communicating that. Can I Any closing thoughts? Thought? Yeah, closing thoughts, Wilson. Go ahead. Yeah, Go closing for. thoughts is uh, I'm gonna share something super counterintuitive. It's business as usual. Mm -hmm. It's an attention economy. There's going to be attrition in our industry. If there is, whoever stays gets the business or the odds are in our favor if we stay in the business. Absolutely. I think Kenny does a really good job in this department. It means if you capture attention, you have more opportunity to serve clients. You have more opportunities to have a conversation. And it just means that maybe you have to have a better presentation securing a buyer broker or a co-op compensation on the listing side. So I think it's just continue doing what you guys do very well, capture attention for the right reasons, not the wrong reasons, and business will be just fine. I think we all agree on that. Any closing advice, guys, to other agents out there on how to navigate? Uh, Leslie, Christine? I think it's just take the time to really know your value. Practice, practice, practice. Download the form and read it. I guarantee there's so many agents who have even looked at the buyer broker agreement. Mm -hmm. Educate yourself on it, right? If you don't have a person that you, a brokerage like Brett said, or a team that you're working with, find someone who you can role play with, right? You have to become the master of this craft. It's no different than becoming a really solid listing agent, right? I practice every single day. So for a buyer's agent, you're going to just need to practice every single day and become very confident in your value and what you're going to be offering. And like Wilson said, it's business as usual. Just continue to add value and do what you do and go above and beyond for your clients and you will succeed in this. I'm, I mean, it's funny, like this came out and I was like, okay, great. We knew this was coming, right? Like Hilda said, this has been ongoing. We've been talking about this to our team for a couple of years now, right? So this is not like, oh, wow, what, when, when did this come about? This has been going on for a really long time. It's just finally come to fruition. And so now... We're going to see a lot of people probably leave the business and we wish them the best, but the people who stay and stick around, this is going to be a great opportunity. This is going to allow you to probably make more money because you're going to have more buyers 
who are dedicated to working with you and you're not going to just meet them at one house and then never see them again, right? You're going to have a solid relationship. So it'll be good. Christine, you got anything? This Closing is, thoughts oh, or advice? I know we're over time. I know we're over time. I can't tell you how many people have called me to save a deal or to take on a listing because their realtor sucked. So <laughs> we're going to start seeing discount agents out there, buyer agents doing deals for a thousand dollars. Like let them, mm -hmm. let them have at it. Good luck. Because when they're not getting their offers accepted and the buyers are calling and they can't show them stuff because they have an influx of all these clients because they're doing deals for a thousand dollars. I mean, that's like a huge risk to take on as a buyer's agent. So if you want to be a discount agent, have at it. The ones who have value, who are professional are going to be getting the calls to save the deals. So just keep doing what you're doing and the business will keep coming. Just like everyone. I'm sorry, Captain Save a Buyer Program. <laughs> yeah, so, right. The buyers are lost. <laughs> My marketing on the page we get. Um, so, so some, some other, I don't know, I just like try to listen, listen to more fun stuff. Like friends, I'll, I'll, to the two conversations I've been to, like I think online leads, people you don't know yet, they're finding you online, are gonna wanna work with you because you're professional and they wanna pay you more. And then no, no one's, again, I like the stuff no one talks about because that is more funny to me. Friends and family. People who are like 100% SOI, friends and family, great. But your friends and family have always asked you for a discount. There's no such thing as a discount now because it's based on concession that the sellers provide. So there's no number to discount off. You're, if you're working only friends and family, they're all going to ask you for a much better rate. So think your income might actually drop. So just think about what it looked like. What would it look like to build a business that's a little more holistic with more different funnels and different ways you're interacting with people? You, you might need to start doing open houses again and just client appreciation party. There's a lot of things you have to do. If you have one or two ways of getting business, it, it might actually hurt your business in the long run. That Because then the whole, like uh, what Brett was saying earlier, well, actually I saw an article from, in Inman, uh, Gary, Ke Gary Keller said that 500,000 people are getting licensed this year. But the attrition rate has always been like 60 to 80%. So realize it's still a good time. So you're watching this, you're a new agent later on. It's still a great time to get in the business. You just have to be trained very, very well. You probably want to align yourself with a team, no specific one in general. Um, and there is opportunity there. It's just a lot of agents will be out, a lot of agents will be coming in. It's still a great time to get really good at what you do. Um, and there's more opportunity than ever. And then it's just, and then there'll be way more structure in this business than ever, I think in business. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I think you made a good point there. Kenny is, is aligning yourself with the right people, right? Whether it's a team, whether it's a brokerage, whoever your leadership is, you really got to align yourself with people who are seen around the corner for you because it's one thing to be in your business every day and practicing and going on appointments, but then to take the time out of your business to really study this stuff and learn how to navigate it and put the presentations together. That's a whole nother role right there that many agents don't spend. A lot of agents don't spend time working on their business. It's mostly in their business, right? So when you align yourself with the right, you know, leadership or team or organization that is going to provide a lot of these resources for you, um, they're going to help you fast track and get through uh, some of the hurdles that you might face if you were to try to do this alone, right? So I, I think it's really important that people really consider who am I aligned with right now? And is that person gonna help me get there faster and get through some of these hurdles that might be coming yeah, in I July? Think, um, uh, I mean, NAR did a great job. I mean, it's depending on how we're framing this. NAR did a good job saving all the a lot of the agents because uh, cause only 92 companies are have to settle themselves over 2 billion. Uh, but they're saving a lot of the independent brokers. Cause I, I, I was talking like, well, what's this independent broker going to do? If they get hit with a lawsuit, they can't afford it. Like a lot of these independent brokers are one person, two person shops, right? That they're going to have a really hard time in this market because they haven't plugged into other people in their market. They've been in for 30 years, two homes a year, and they've been happy and whatever. They're not going to masterminds. They're not going to conferences. They're not going to training. They're not participating in their local association events. I don't know what they're going to do because they're going to have the hardest time figuring this out unless you're starting to plug plug in a little more just with people in general and then with the commission stuff specific to like how much you are charging the any brokers are all on, are, are on islands they don't talk to each other i don't know what what they're they're not even hearing options and different ideas of how to charge and what to charge so i don't know i, I hope they stay around because they, they have the listings too and we want to work with them but everyone needs to step it up in this market absolutely i, I just want to you know um I know there's going to be a lot of models that are going to pop up, right? Because in every adversity um, comes opportunity. So there are people who have also had their eyes on uh, 
this litigation uh, for many years and have already created more shiny objects and silver bullet solutions, right? Where you can break down, you know, your time and charge a fee for uh, specific services, et cetera. And most of those models already exist, um, whether you refer to them as discount brokerages or whatnot. Um, but be careful. I think it's better to align and train up and really um, be able to offer um, services that are commensurate with your um, compensation model uh, than it is to say, oh, I'm going to resign and just become a showing agent and, you know, get paid $150 to open doors. It, it really, and it depends again on where you're at in your career and what you want to do with your time. Um, but if you want to be like the uh, mega attorneys that bill in eight minute increments, um, you got to show what you can deliver um, in terms of knowledge and expertise in order to generate those fees. Um, and so uh, I just want to reiterate, reiterate, I can't even remember, uh, agree with everybody here and say that, you know, training is the most important thing to do um, and uh, never practice on your clients. We all can uh, agree on that. And let's go. There is opportunity in this business. And, um, you know, if you want to lead generate for three hours a day um, to get buyers, guess what? You have a great opportunity. And there's, uh, you know, right now, um, like I said, even going out and letting buyers know if you have any concern whatsoever with your ability to pay me for my services, we can go as, you know, all in until July and get something closed for you well, be in, well before that timeline. Uh, and then there's no concerns at all. No, immediately. Well, the op opposite of like, if you and if you don't want to spend that much time leveling up, building a business, maybe you want our agents are looking for better compensation models. You know, you, you, this is all different brokerages here. So between you have Keller Williams, Independent, uh, we're EXP, Cloud Based, Virtual. You know, if you're with a company that charges a lot and you don't plan to level up that much, but you still want to do business, but not a lot of business, there's still you know doing three five deals a year is perfectly fine if that matches your lifestyle. You know, people should look at different models available to maybe cut down their costs. Mm -hmm. So and if you're going to get paid less, but you still want to do the same amount of business and not do more business because you just don't have the time and capacity, then find a way to pay less. So that's my pitch. Absolutely. <laughs> awesome, guys. Well, I think we hit it. Uh, we, we went about an hour, guys. Sorry for the the uh, mix up in the beginning. You really uh, forgot to push a button. Forgot to push a button or something. Hey, man, now I know, right? I won't make that mistake. I can't practice on you guys, right? Um, but uh, it was great uh, masterminding with all you guys. Um, let's keep this going. And even Hilda talked about maybe come July, we do another one of these once the final stuff is in play. Um, I I'll think say your market, I'm, we're saying I'm more of this in your market, wherever you might be watching in the US, like it's a good idea to just get some people together. You can do it yeah. this way or you can do it locally. Like people need each other right now. Yeah, do the same thing that we're doing. I mean, this is all to help each other grow, right? And build relationships. So I appreciate all you guys Don't taking time under on a rock. Rock. Don't hide yeah. under a rock. This is happening. We have to realize this is happening. Let's That's, get our yeah. stuff out there. Yeah, and and the, to close out, guys, I think the message is just get in front of this stuff, right? Like you hiding under a rock, like Gary said, and you just thinking like, hey, I can wait till July. You're gonna be way behind schedule because there's people like us right now that are already working on things right now. So that we're going to have a lot of runway and we're going to be like fully up and running when the changes do go in effect. So start now, guys. Don't procrastinate. And also remind yourself of what sort of stories are you creating for yourself in your head, right? There's there's different narratives that you're hearing out there online and stuff like that. Stay so out the like, Facebook groups. Yeah, stay out the Facebook <laughs> groups, out of the comments. <laughs> And Can't you just got to decide, like, what's the mindset that I'm going to take going forward with, with these changes? And hopefully it's, it's a positive one. So thank you guys for showing up, guys. Uh, thank you for all the everyone that was watching. We'll talk soon.